in court, uh, Julian is, is practically invisible and silenced. You know, he's not allowed to sit with his lawyers. He can't speak. Uh, he described it as if he was in a, in a tennis match as a spectator, um, seeing them discuss uh, his case. Uh, he wasn't able to participate in any meaningful uh, way. Um, he's, he's had to uh, prepare his case uh, from Belmarsh Prison, which is uh, incredibly uh, difficult. Just getting uh, legal papers into Belmarsh Prison takes days and days. We had this absurd situation where the second superseding indictment came in. And it, I think it took something like 10 days or two weeks for the, for the indictment to come into the prison. Um, the, the US Department of Justice had published it on its website with this um, great fanfare and a PR, you know, a press release uh, with, the, with the particular spin uh, that they had on the on the superseding indictment, which uh, we'll come back to because there's been kind of a, a breakthrough in, in, in relation to, to the case. Um, and, and Julian didn't see it for, for something like two weeks. The rest of the world could read it on the internet. You know, this is the dynamic. The DOJ has, the Department of Justice has unlimited um, resources, uh, as many people as it wants to man this thing. Uh, and Julian is struggling to receive the indictment for two weeks. This is the true uh, uh, inequality, the true unfairness. This is what we're having to fight. Uh, so it, it really is a, a David uh, versus Goliath uh, fight 